Okay, I'm gonna film a quick video now about how to press out the valve guides of this KTM 500 head. I have a series of three videos up about how to pull the head and how to change the valve stem seals and how to change the piston rings to solve engine oil um, like intake, engines burning oil. In my case, what I actually discovered is that after I put all that back together, I was still, it would start to burn oil again pretty quickly. And I found out that the valve stems were nicking the valve stem seals, too many words. And the reason the valve stems were nicked was because the valve guides are worn out. So valve guides are softer material than the valve stems on this bike. And so the, when you get play in the valves, it's because of the valve guides. I didn't think to check that the first time I was in here. So now I'm pressing them out. It's quite a process. If you're not super comfortable using a press and lots and lots and lots of heat and being really careful with shit and basically running a machine shop, this is probably not something that you want to do. You could take it and have a machine shop do it. But if you know your way around machine shop tools and you're just looking for like where this shit goes or you want to be daring, um, come with me on this journey. This is going to be a really short, quick video. Um, it actually took me a ton of time to figure out how to do this. Now I'm going to show you like the quick and dirty process. You're going to see the highlights and um, yeah, you can decide whether or not this is a job that you want to tackle or not. So you can see here the valve guides. Uh, these are the exhaust, the smaller ones, and these are the intakes. I'm only going to change the intakes because they're the only ones that are bad. If I flip this over, these are the other side of the valve guides. So here and here, and you can see, or I, th I can see, I don't know how well it shows up on video, but there's nicks and scratches in the inside surface of this. And that's causing the valve to move around and causing the valve seal to fail prematurely. We're gonna be pressing these out. Actually, we're gonna be pressing them up this way from the bottom side. So we're gonna put this in the press and press on these. But as you can see, like this whole thing's at an angle. What we're gonna do, I'm gonna show you the setup and then I'm just gonna dive in and sort of show you some highlights of getting it done. But basically I'm setting a wrench like this or a socket like this. And I'm gonna set that around the valve guide from this side. And the valve guide's basically gonna drop down into the socket. So I'm gonna set it like that basically. And you can see that now I'm pressing against the valve or the socket, which is seated evenly and flush against where the valve guide sits. And so even though if I back out here, the head's at an angle, the only thing that's touching down is that socket and it's pressing, everything's pressing straight down through that socket. So I can now press straight down on the inside of that valve guide with the other part of my clever little setup is one of these. So I ordered steel dowels. Uh, just got them on Amazon. This is an eight millimeter. I think the valve guide is like slightly larger than 10 millimeters. So this should fit cleanly inside the hole. It's almost small enough to go inside, but not quite. I think that'll be perfect. And so we're just gonna press down on this. And then as you'll see, we're gonna add a lot of heat from the torch. When we started this process, we sort of test ran this the other day. It required a shitload of heat. Like we had to get this thing not glowing. You don't wanna crack anything or whatever, but um, it was too hot to touch for like an hour afterwards. We have to use these these welding gloves that I have. So that's the process. Uh, I've got a hydraulic jack here. It's very basic. And that's how I'm gonna pop those out. And uh, yeah, I'm gonna get set up how I do this. Let's give it a shot. So this is the basic setup. Now I'm gonna heat the shit out of it and start putting pressure on. Take that back. I can't press on this wood block because it's just gonna punch through. There we go. There's one. This thing's gotta be roasting. There it is. Bad valve guide, so that's not that bad. The other thing that I didn't mention is I measured the depth of them and I recorded that depth because I can't see any obvious markings on the valve guides that tell you how deep to press them back in. So I'm gonna do one at a time and match them and measure the depth that I measured on the ones before I started pushing on anything. And hopefully that works. Yeah, sure. And you can see I've set the new valve guide in and I'm gonna put a little pressure on to see if I can, I wanna make sure I get it started straight before I do any heating or anything crazy. Um, oh, a quick note on setup. I've got my cross plate set at, a, at an angle down like that so that, and I actually drilled out a hole for this pin over here so that we got this angle of the head to be perfect so that this vertical position over the valve guide is just right. Looks like it's about the height of the other side. Before I go too far, I'm gonna take it out and measure it. It's just, I mean, it's dropping in nicely. There's no, no challenge. This should be like 13.7-ish millimeters of depth. Let's see where we're at. Nope, way too much. I need to go a lot more. Bit more. 
I'm actually going to mark approximately where it should be so that I can save some time. There we go. That's about right. And that's the valve guides pressed in. Hope that you learned something from my janky little setup, um, but it worked. I've got both the ex uh, intake valve guides nicely replaced. Everything else, you can follow my prior video series in terms of how to put the valves back in, how to put the springs on and all that stuff. The valve stem seals, I've got all that new going back in. Don't forget to check out our line of chin mounts like this for GoPro and other action cameras. Check it out. They're pretty badass. We 3D print them for my 75 and a growing list of helmets. Um, link in the description. I won't belabor it, but we now have a mount you can also put a light on. So GoPro and a light for night riding and recording. Um, you can also just put a light on it and you've got a headlight on your helmet, which is pretty cool. So check those out. Check out the links to the other video series on burning oil on a KTM. We have a podcast, so like and subscribe. You don't want to miss that. We haven't had an episode in a little while, but we're getting to it, we promise. It's been busy. Peace.